together with the Ministry of Justice and the Technical Ministry, must participate fully in the evolution, uh, the evolving of the contract or agreement, so that the interests of Uganda are undertaken. For example, this was an agreement between the Uganda government and the World Bank. But we discovered that the Uganda representatives never really participated in, uh, shall we say, voting and monitoring what was happening. Uh, the exercise was done by the World Bank, uh, which also is an interested party in the sense that we must pay this loan back. So we are commending that uh, where we have uh, a, a, a loan which was we have to pay with interest, albeit in this case the World Bank has been generous, we are paying very little interest. But even then, we must have equal opportunity to monitor, supervise the project, and to be able to assess it and get periodical reports. We discovered that whereas the World Bank was periodically getting reports, our ministry here, or our government, was not getting the any, and those that they got simply disappeared in the thin air. They never reached the relevant authorities. So we are recommending, secondly, that we must have an intensive training of the people to man our uh, national parks and animal reserves so that we can compete with others whose people are much more enlightened, better trained and have experience. We do not have that. Sadly, we have said that those that have been implicated uh, in uh, the, the disappearance of money, uh, where they have used money for their personal uh, f personal interest and so forth, should be immediately re removed from the industry. Because as I speak now, we have made recommendation that, for example, uh, the executive director of UWA, which is directly, should be interdicted pending inquiry. Dr. Seguya. Yes. I am told he's still there. I just cannot believe it. I don't know what's happening. To well, but the man has just got into this job, and you say all he did is give money is, to the Minister of Tourism. He's just gotten there, and it's less than a year. And his fault is yeah, so he facilitated it. Mean, even tonight you get into this radio studio and you steal money, you, because you are so new, we should leave you alone. Come on. This area said but Zabulov said, he said he gave money to the Ministry of Tourism. To yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's been paying a few millions, not even hundred millions. Hundreds of millions, a small, you know, number of in, uh, of money. in our law, his parent in our law, law, if you steal one shilling, you are as bad as one steals one billion. So, please, I am a lawyer by profession, don't distinguish between theft. Theft is theft, you understand it? Yes, however, they said they were bringing the pressure on him to pay the ministry. The ministry doesn't have enough money. So whenever they are short of money, they go to Ua yes. and they draw money. So is that his fault? It is his fault. Because he's an accounting officer. The Lord does not allow him to do that. So he should refuse. Where people ask you to do an illegality, you must refuse. Unless you love your office so much that you could even sell your grandmother in order to stay there. Professor Kanyahamba, you also implicated ministers in this yes. report. Yes. Do you, what do you expect them to? What do you, who do you expect to implement this report? In no, uh, who? Yes. We have the president. We have the people of Uganda. Let me tell you how we have gone about informing the public. After we gave the, uh, have, have given the minister our report, we sent a, a copy of our report under the evidence to the president's office. We sent a copy and a report to speak of parliament and to the relevant committees, including public accounts committee, including the committee on tourism uh, and wildlife and heritage. We sent a copy to the NGOs, the, the coalition for uh, anti-corruption. Yes. We sent reports to all the reporters, you are the one who missed out, who were interested, in, uh, who supported us and helped us to compile this report. Let me tell you, we went further. You know the church has been speaking against corruption. We sent a copy to uh, the Archbishop of Kampala, who is the head of the uh, Catholic Church. We sent a copy to the Archbishop of Uganda, so that nobody says we didn't know that. 
But in our commendation, we dis rather in our findings, we find that there were a number of reports, about four of them, uh, including the Ernest and the Younger report, the Quillinger, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, 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 Quillinger report uh, on gorillas. We found a report by the World Bank, which s discovered that about 2.1 billion shillings had again been diverted in the ministry from UA. Those reports have been under lock and uh, under cover and lock. We said those reports must be published. Members, rather, members of parliament, the president must copy, get copies of those. Because these are the same people who had already been reported in other probe reports, but nobody has ever done anything because they don't know about these reports. Uh, so this is really is serious that we are not serious about fighting corruption. Tell me, and uh, let the public know, here is a serious, by the way we are not a probe, we are a commission of inquiry, Yes. set up under uh, the Commissions of Inquiry Act, Parliament. Therefore we have the powers similar to those of the High Court. Now how can a commission like ours report that the following individuals should be interdicted because they are at a game that is making this country lose billions? How does the minister continue? keeping those in office. And supposing now we discover that there has been losses since our uh, uh, we reported the interdiction, who will be responsible? Professor Kanyahamba, before the ninth parliament began its work, you gave a keynote address at their induction. One of the points of advice that you gave them was that parliament, in a, uh, in a parliament which is dominated by one party, some members of the ruling party should consider becoming an opposition. Now, looking at what has been uh, happening and uh, the other guys are backdrop of your own uh, council, uh, what do you think uh, this parliament, uh, do you think it's doing what it's... What yes, it's uh, so far, I, I catch, you don't read my uh, uh, weekly... Uh, articles in Monitor, yes. uh, the Land Review, uh, in one of those uh, articles I have uh, praised the Ninth Parliament. I think so far they have not put a foot wrong, uh, they have done excellent work, uh, they have behaved the way you expect an independent, free uh, parliament in a democracy to behave. Uh, and therefore, uh, I am very, very happy that uh, having at least interacted with them, uh, they are, uh, I'm not, they are not necessarily following what I said, but what they are doing is certainly what we uh, people expect them to do. I'm do you think they'll happy. do it to the end? We very much hope and we pray that they will continue to do so. The, uh, as you remember, uh, I was uh, the chairman of the Legal and Drafting Committee, which made our constitution, yes. uh, uh, which we promulgated in 1995. Previous to that, uh, all our constitutions placed executive first in the constitution. We deliberately decided to do the opposite. We said parliament is the most important and the eminent organ in our state because it directly represents the population, the people. So we placed parliament first. If you read the provisions of the 1995 constitution, no other organ, the president, the executive or any other can do anything that has not been sanctioned by parliament. Uh, over the last three parliaments, the reverse has been the case, in the sense that the executive have overswamped the powers of parliament, yes. and now it seems to be the one calling the tune instead of the other way around. Now, for the first time, we have an independent and uh, a speaker who are living to the tenure and to the expectations of the population. And uh, we hope they will persist in that one. Well, there has been a lot of debate about whether it makes sense for ministers to turn office while they are undergoing investigation, including the Prime Minister. In your experience as a former judge and an, an investigator, what would you advise? No, no, I am going to discuss these matters with the committee in Parliament. Tomorrow? Uh, on Wednesday. On Wednesday, yes. and therefore, if you don't mind, uh, I will not uh, indulge any information about that one or offer an opinion until I have seen the bosses of 
of this country, which is Parliament. Do you think there's a seriousness about fighting corruption? In some areas, there is seriousness. In some others, uh, the fight is just lip service. Lip service? Uh, yes, because uh, let me give you an example. Uh, my, my last article, by the way, I don't know the you read it, last Sunday, uh, I was in the defense of the president. Yes. That uh, ministers and the civil servants have let him down. What I'm saying, here is a president who stands up and says, the figures that were put in the letter of Passage uh, Baraba were forged. Billions, yes. 342 billion, was forged. And the president says, these people should be dealt with. Now, how come today, as I speak to you, they are still at large? All right. This is Spectrum on Radio and the Fight Against Corruption tonight, hosting Professor George Kenyahamba. You can call in now. Our number is 0414 As you call in, when you call in, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Spectrum, hello. Good evening, Spectrum. Good evening, sir. Your name? Uh, Dr. Kim is my name. Yes. I salute you the grand this fellow in the studio. Uh, well, I thank you for the wonderful job being done. And I wish Uganda continue to have more of you. But that was only in the one ministry or one department of the ministry. Don't you think we still need you people, your commission, to go and test other ministries so that we get to know what is happening there? And in conclusion, in your recommendation, you talked of interdiction. Well, now, what happens after interdiction? Don't you think you that uh, at the same time we recommend that after interdiction, even their property should be called so that you can benefit and find a way of being back at their money for more than that country? Spectrum, hello. Good evening. Good evening, your name? Uh, yeah, I'm Charles Tassos, I'm calling from now. And I thank you very much for bringing Professor Kanyeyamba. I, I would just make one comment on the article, the last part of his talk. For me, I disagreed with you, Professor. I want you to tell me one incident where a junior person to the president has done something that you are describing, like they are not helping him. And he came out and sucked that person. I just want you to tell me one incident. For me, I don't... I don't understand that question. Allah rephrase it. I think it's a very clear question. Hmm. Spectrum, hello? 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 Yes, uh, your, yes, your name? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, now, uh, thank you for the topic, but uh, I believe your, your name, we've had many reports. Your name? Uh, commission of Inquiry. Can you tell us your name, sir? But the government has not acted. Do you remember even uh, Monitor published uh, the Police Commission of Inquiry, but most of the officers were in, instead promoted. So how sure are you that, uh, that the government is going to really to put your recommendation into action, yet the minister himself has rubbish the whole report. Thank you. Spectrum, hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, your name? I'm A.M. calling from Tinder. Thank you for hosting the third judge, Professor Kanye Hamba. I want to salute him for his articulation and his concern, because at his age, he should be retiring, but it, it shows that he's very interested in the country and in the future. So, judge, I want, I want to ask you, to me, the moral decadence of a civil servant, guys working in government, and their arrogance, to me, I hope there is no way we can we can fight corruption because these guys they make a system whereby they know what's happening and they are the they are the, the, the top. They look at what you have mentioned. They, 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 in fact, it's a very tricky thing. So, how can you do that again? Thank you. Spectrum, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Your name? My name is Gerardo. I just want to find out from Professor <coughs> among your recommendations because the uh, uh, the tourism is one of the things that can bring a lot of uh, uh, work to balance and even create employment. What was your real recommendation apart from corruption? Because I even see the potential when you look at Uganda. 
kingdom and then other kingdoms, when they unite with the government and work together, they can create a lot of jobs for young people. What was your recommendation on that area? Spectrum, hello. 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 Yes, sir, your name? Uh, my name is Mark. I'm calling from Tinder. Please go on, hello. Mark. Go on. Yes, uh, the professor says he hasn't completed his investigations and yet he has made the recommendations on no, I said that finished. to be terminated uh, and, and, and prosecuted. Is he really being fair if he hasn't visited the field to that the infrastructure has not been done and is concluding that people should, uh, should people there should roll? And uh, he's actually recommending people who were not there at the time to be prosecuted. Is he really being fair? And, and another point is the way he has handled the investigation. We see a lot of uh, him pushing and shouting at people. Is that really the right way? Shouldn't he have actually allowed people to speak, even allow those people that he's choosing to come and also share their evidence of what they know about this? I find that while the cause is good, perhaps the approach and the, the means that he has used to arrive at this conclusion doesn't seem to be very fair to the people. And for Radio 1, can you also call in some of these people that are being accused to come and also they share their views and also give uh, information what they know? See if this report is not being presented out in the right manner and approach. All right. Final caller. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Yes, your name? Um, just from Tinder. George, yes. I think uh, somehow I disagreed with the previous uh, caller. Somehow he's uh, on a personal attack to the judge, but uh, that that shouldn't uh, divert your intentions of eliminating the corrupt tendencies of this nation. Well and good, uh, I wanted to ask whether if there is a plan to investigate more of these corrupt allegations. Say, for instance, Validam, nothing has come to spotlight. But uh, this NS, I uh, mean, the the who I think is just a, a tip of an iceberg. Thank you. God bless you. All right, Professor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to tackle the question that was asked just before this last one. Yes. Uh, which which uh, the last one I, I, I like because he really is pointing out the real issues. You know, this is our problem. You can see that caller is not interested in our findings. He's not interested in our uh, comment, uh, rather find uh, uh, our recommendations about individuals. He's interested in the methods we have used. Yes. He said the methods were wrong and so forth. As we have never thought that it is because he can remember using those methods that he discovers what other people don't discover. And we have written an article which primarily the court have not to write. But it depends on the subjects and circumstances people are dealing with. You must use all the methods. What matters, I haven't injured anybody, I have not hit anybody, but because of these methods, we have discovered the truth. Do you want the truth? What do you want cosmetic? Yeah, uh, be polite, uh, shake hands, and I, I, I scratch on the surface. But what is wrong is fundamental. He said, I said, I have not finished our, our report, our investigation. No, I have not said that at all. We finished our report. I went at the end to explain that when the minister delayed to, uh, to to extend us, then we took our own means of how we find that, that information and so forth. Now you say, we didn't visit those places. Can you remember? I'm a lawyer. I'm not a builder. I'm not a constructing engineer. We have a, uh, we, uh, we had a, a, a UPDF uh, uh, canal. We had uh, a financier uh, fi from the Ministry of Finance. We had one engineer. Uh, if we had gone there, it would just be uh, a nice thing on the cake. But the, 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 we had experts, including the representative from the World Bank, right. visiting these places, okay. telling us what should happen and so forth. So we did 100% investigation of all these reports. 
When somebody commits murder, you don't have to be at the scene in order to say that they really did mention it. You could use circumstantial evidence. Yes. And maybe you, you, you could tell me to the other with the question that uh, yeah, I should Dr. Say. Kim Tokambali says, uh, why don't you attach properties of these people? Uh, do what? Well, once we found them guilty, you, why don't you attach their properties, some of them? Oh, yes. You see, uh, Dr. Kim, that was a very, very, very good question. In fact, that's what we are recommending. We say these people who took money illegally, who embezzled money, must be uh, m must be forced to 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 uh, to, re to refund the, the money. Uh, they must be uh, able to if they have got properties, houses. These houses should be yes. If the evidence connects that they used the, our money, it, these houses should be uh, confiscated. But this is not a new thing. Yes, we have had the anti-corruption act of 1970 on our statutes books since that year and it, it talks about where somebody has got ill gotten profits mm, yes. they should be seized to be attached and taken and attached <coughs> Charles Kasozi asks mm. you from NASA he asks, has the president ever sacked a subordinate because he says for instance in the Vasajara case that somebody forced but he says looking at the track record has ever sacked someone whom he accused of such a misdemeanors well I think we are all Ugandans. We should search our records and say whether they have ever done. Um, well, you've been around for a long. You can't tell us. There were, there were certain people that uh, I think I can't remember uh, where I think the president said they, they, they should be sacked. I think at one or two times he, he has uh, relieved the ministers of their responsibility. Uh, because but, of uh, yes, but, but uh, uh, I think that uh, my view is this: the president cannot do everything. We have agencies in this country which should be doing their duty. We have the Inspector General of Government. We have the Director of Public Prostitutions. We have the police. Uh, the police, unfortunately, and Kaihu has a lot to answer. Me, personally, I have report, reported about 12 cases. About selling of them to him personally, right? But he has not done anything. So I think that we shouldn't continue blaming the president. I, I wrote in my article that the president complains, and I think he's justified that it is the ministers and authorities who let him down. Right? They do nothing. The president is one individual. He cannot do all that. Well, but he presses the buttons. He has the power buttons on his dashboard. No, he doesn't. Oh, really? Many, many times, uh, these some of these ministers and the cadres tell him lies. All right. Maybe he is visiting, he's representing our country everywhere. To me, I put the blame hundred percent on subordinates, on ministers, on the, the, the agencies right. of law enforcement, okay. uh, like the IGG, who has been doing quite a good job. Uh, but uh, lately, they have been attacking him. We have to go, but before we go, mm -hmm. the government does not act. Lino says police inquiries. We had seventeen day recommending, you know, pol action in the police mm -hmm. force. Nothing was done. There's many things. Actually, so uh, for me as a Ugandan, I'm very, very sad. Some of the recommendations by the seventeen day report, by the Kuringer report, by the Anderson the Young report, are excellent. They would have improved our governance. They would have improved. Uh, our method is of protecting our money and the property, and nobody has ever acted up, upon them. Will they act on yours? Uh, or we need to pray hard on that. It is not them, it is you. We have to go. You, the police, I have sent it to the Christians, to the anti Let's see what the bishops will say. We'll I hope go. they are reading our report. We have to go. And let's see, they should go public. Thank you very much, Professor. I thank you. Judge Wilson Kenyahamba, former Supreme Court judge and chairman of the Commission of Inquiry into the Affairs of the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Thank you for coming to Spectrum. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Ed Monchis. To Spectrum, we'll be back tomorrow. Up next, there is a news in English.